Okay, so this is our theories class, and we have uh, just watched the Gloria tape uh, with Carl Rogers uh, interviewing Gloria. Um, tell me what you noticed in the in the tape with Gloria. She felt relaxed. She felt relaxed. You felt like she felt relaxed, Kylie. You don't agree with that? You're shaking your I head. I thought she seemed pretty troubled back and forth with her own feelings. Okay. You feel like she felt back and forth with her own feelings? Uh, there's a lot of clarification used by Rogers. Okay. Um, and that is the that is one of the hallmarks of the person-centered therapy is clarifying and, and active listening with your client and uh, that continual checking in. Hillary, did you have any thoughts? I heard him say a lot. What I'm hearing you say is what I'm understanding is In the work with you do, that you are currently doing with with your clients, uh, do you feel that this is applicable with some of your kids? Mm -hmm. What would what do you think makes this theory applicable? It helps the kid develop their own solution to their problems. Okay, helps them come up with their own solution to their problems. Okay. It's very validating okay. of the person. Validating of the person. Okay, if you will open your handout, person-centered therapy handout, uh, this is a guideline and a reading. Uh, first of all, it gives you a little bit of history about Carl Rogers. Uh, Rogerian techniques are uh, what we call a humanistic vein of therapy. Uh, which means that they are person-centered. And if, when we think of person-centered therapies, we think of Carl Rogers as, as the instigator um, of that movement. Um, Carl Rogers, uh, at the time that he came up, uh, the, uh, the prevailing thought processes of the day were psychoanalytic theories those cog cognitive based theories were just getting started. Uh, what do you think the value is of pers person centered therapy in that light? Comparing it to what we've learned before with psychoanalysis and uh, cognitive behavioral therapies. Uh, it's focused more on wellness as opposed to di diagnosis. Okay. It's focusing on wellness rather than diagnosis, and, and I think that we would all kind of have the same love-hate relationship with uh, diagnosis. We gives the patient the control. Empowers more than the, the patient yeah. more than the more than the, the clinician. Yes, it does. I agree. Okay. So Carl Rogers emphasized the humanistic perspective as well as ensuring therapeutic relationships with clients to promote their self-esteem authenticity and actualization in their life. It is also one of the very first what we call strength-based approaches. What do we mean when we say strength-based approach? You're focused on what they can do rather than what they can't do. Right. And as compared to the, the predecessors of person-centered therapy, when you had the cognitive theories, some of the cognitive theory, theories were very deep. Uh, you, you had to do a lot of thinking. Uh, the, the clients may have felt demeaned in, in some kind of way. Uh, psychoanalysis may have worked for some people, um, but even later in his life, Sigmund Freud uh, quipped that sometimes a cigar is just a cigar and there's no reference to your subconscious. Um, so the failings of the cognitive behavior movement and psychoanalytic movement pushed us into these more humanistic type techniques. Um, the beauty of person-centered therapy is that you can use it with any person, um, regardless of their strengths. And would we all agree that all persons have some kind of strength yes. in, in some in some regard. So uh, even though they may not be doing exactly as we would want them to do, 
uh, or exactly as we are doing in our lives, uh, they certainly have strengths and they certainly have values and we want to want to uh, accentuate those strengths. Okay, so going on into this, um, this handout that I've provided to you, one of the key concepts of uh, Carl Rogers therapy is actualization. What is self-actualization? If you think back to what you learned in Psychology 101 or Psych 100, whichever one of your basic level classes that you had, I know you saw Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And at the very top of that pyramid was what? Self-actualization. Self-actualization, right. So this process of utilizing person-centered therapy nudges a person toward that self-actualization, getting uh, to the point of developing, uh, developing completely, attaining completeness in one's life. And that will mean something different to every person. Uh, Siegelman states that uh, self-actualization is uh, movement towards realizing your intrinsic goals involving autonomy and self-regulation. So we create those goals within ourselves. What is the, the top of the mountain for me? Uh, maybe the base of the mountain for someone else, so to speak. Uh, but as a person-centered clinician, we would take that information and know that, you know, my, my pinnacle of success may not be anywhere near your pinnacle of success. It may be the base, but it's okay. You are achieving according to your schedule, and that's okay with me. Uh, <clears throat> and like Kylie mentioned earlier, that is what is so empowering about the person-centered movement. Uh, the next concept that within the Rogerian therapy is conditions of worth. Um, we saw in the Gloria tapes that she had some conditions of worth. Uh, she had some crises uh, involving how she felt about herself. Let's talk just a minute about that. Uh, what was she struggling with? Her behavior and how it affected her children. Her, her behavior and the way it affected her children, her child. Uh, and she was struggling with being sexual, uh, being human, and being a mother, and feeling that um, feeling that those roles were conflicting. Uh, she wanted to be honest with her daughter, uh, but she also wanted her daughter to uh, have a little bit higher standard than what she was having. Uh, so she was conflicted um, in that. How did Rogers address that with her? Originally, she came seeking a direct answer from him, and mm -hmm. he obviously took the counseling session to a way where she can analyze uh, the pros and cons, so to speak, to come to her own conclusion on how right. she really felt about it. He gave it back to her. He did not uh, browbeat her. He didn't criticize her about her values. He took a very non-directive, reflective approach with her. Uh, how do you think she felt? How do you think that that Gloria felt in that session? Because she, like you said, Ross, she clearly came seeking answers. Yeah. I think at one point he, she felt encouraged because she felt like he actually meant what he was saying to her. And it made her feel like that she wasn't in the wrong for what she was saying. Okay, so that relationship was there, that unconditional positive regard, which is another hallmark of of Rogerian therapy that we haven't gotten into yet, but he met her with unconditional positive regard and established pretty quickly that therapeutic alliance with her. That's right. So, uh, how do you think she felt about that? She felt good about it. Do you think that there might have been some negative feelings? By her body language and her facial expression? There were a couple times I think she was really surprised by what he was saying, so that initial feeling could have been like, oh, he couldn't give me the answer, and then she it seemed like she realized she understood 
Mm -hmm. Do you think maybe she was feeling some conflict between feeling relief Mm -hmm. that he wasn't judging her, but Mm -hmm. then feeling frustration that she wanted him to fix her problem? Mm -hmm. She wanted him to just tell her, you know, am I I doing the right thing or the wrong thing? What's the best thing for my child? I I think towards the end she felt relief in uh, the understanding that the situation is complex and Mm -hmm. the admitting from a professional that he doesn't have all the answers and that. It is a difficult situation indeed, so mm-hmm. the reasons she sought out counseling were warranted. Yeah. He normalized things for her and he helped her to see that, you know, she's not I don't think he made her feel crazy. Um, and a lot of our clients certainly feel that. A lot of a lot of our clients certainly feel that stigma of of seeking mental health services. So uh, when we can meet them with that unconditional positive regard uh, and help to empower them then we help them along their along their process so another one of Rogers concepts was the fully functioning person uh, attaining ideal emotional health what is ideal emotional health like where you want it to be or even better where do you want it to be or even better okay where you can function in society and where you life. best feel comfortable mm-hmm. and again uh, what is what is my full my definition of fully functioning may be totally different from from that of somebody else um, it's just going to depend on um, our morals and values and what we what we see is necessary and, and where we are at a certain station in our lives and uh, this is where it's so important with person-centered therapy, person-centered interventions, to just meet people where they are, um, and not have uh, unrealistic expectations of them, but then capitalizing upon their strengths as well. So, if you look on page five in your handout, there are five goals of person-centered therapy. The first one is to facilitate the client's trust and ability to be in the present moment. This allows the client to be honest in the process without feeling judged by the therapist. Do you feel that Gloria felt that in the tape that you watched uh, between her and Carl Rogers? Yes. Okay. So he he was following the rules of his own therapy there. (laughs) Uh, The second one is to promote client self-awareness and self-esteem. Do you think that he was doing that? In what ways was he doing that? He was reflecting back with her on how she felt about the situation. Mm -hmm. So that she was aware of her own feelings towards. Correct. And how does it affect your self-awareness and your self-esteem if someone meets you, responds to you with judgment? Oh, I don't think you should think that way or... You know, what do you mean having sex with your, you know, you're not married? You know, the, these tapes are old. So that was certainly, uh, sex outside of marriage was certainly not, was outside of the norm, so to speak, uh, when this tape was made. I think it would definitely close the person off. Absolutely. Anymore. Absolutely. You know, sometimes we close that conversation off without even realizing that we're doing it. Uh, We may have just body language or uh, any number of any number of things that we close ourselves off with. Uh, Now we have all of these technological devices that sometimes close us off, make us feel distant from the person. Okay, to empower the client to change. That's the third one. Do you feel like that Carl Rogers empowered Gloria to change? In yes, the video. because she wanted change. I think if the person didn't want change, he wouldn't have been all about the change. But it's kind of like, since she that's what she wanted in the long run, then he helped her realize what she needed to do and how she felt about what she was doing. And with you all, your background is working in community mental health. How is it different and sometimes very challenging to empower clients to change. When the change is for someone else. 
when the change is for somebody else. Right. Most of the time when we have a child, when we have a child that comes in, it's because a school teacher has complained about their behavior, a parent has complained about their behavior, a court designated worker has ordered them to come in. It's sometimes difficult to motivate a person to change when uh, when they're forced to be here. Uh, so that's certainly a challenge that we have to overcome. How do we do that in our in our setting? As you mentioned previously, focusing on their strengths. Mm -hmm. Focusing on their strengths is a good way. So, uh, you know, a lot of our children when they come in, the the kids that we work with have not heard anybody say, "Hey, you're really awesome at this. You you really have talent at this." So I I think that that is crucial for us to make sure that we are identifying the strengths of a child because all kids have strengths uh, and that's that's the underlying premise of, of person-centered therapy is, is that all people have worth, all people have value, all people have the potential to self-actualize and to become whole and complete according to whose definition? According to their own definition. Yeah, according to their own standards. They set they set the goals. Okay. I think also just kind of building rapport until you can kind of see how the person who wants the change for them is also a change that they want. Mm hmm And finding that like angle and motivation in the client. Okay. Helping to motivate the, the client to change using their strengths, capitalizing right. on their strengths. And a lot of times they probably want the same changes as the people around them and they right. not, might not even realize right. it. They, they may want mom and dad to shut up already about everything that's going on. They might want them off their case. Uh, they, they definitely don't want to go to jail. Uh, some kids might want to go to jail. No, no kid wants to go to jail. Uh, they they don't want to be there they they want to have some level of success in their life even if they uh, seem to be on a very self-destructive path we all want to succeed in some way uh, number four is to encourage congruence in the client's behavior and feelings so what does that mean congruence in their behavior and feelings I think it's self-explanatory to have the client feel as if that their behavior and feelings are interactive and accurate. Okay. Um, the reason their behavior is a certain way is due to their feelings. Okay. So if I'm feeling like I'm guilty, I'm feeling guilty because I'm having, like Gloria was, if I'm having sex with single men and I'm an unmarried woman, I'm a divorced woman, and that does not match up with my values... I might point that out and Carl did a beautiful job of, do, of, of pointing out that incongruence. So what you're telling me is you want your daughter to have this value and respect for her body and you don't want to have to tell her the truth about your behavior. So how are these things that you have a conflict here, you have some incongruence. Uh, and he did it in a very beautiful way, not, not quite that direct. He did it in a little bit more kind and gentle way, as, as only Rogers can. Um, but we can all strive toward being more, being more Rogers, uh, being more Carl Rogers. To help people gain the ability to, ma to manage their lives and become self-actualized. Do you think that Carl did a good job of helping people gain, helping Gloria to gain the ability to manage her life and become self-actualized? I think during the initial session, it was focused on identifying the problem, but if Gloria was able to successfully work through her issues to her own standards, then mm -hmm. she would feel empowered to handle future endeavors on her own, perhaps. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it would be interesting to, to follow through um, and the, the, the his, just a little bit of the history of the Gloria tapes. Gloria sat down with three different therapists. She sat down with uh, Carl Rogers, Fritz Perls, and Albert Ellis, uh, and they all three had very different types, uh, and I won't give away the mystery and, and let you know which one she chose. Um, uh, you think it was Carl? Mm -hmm. 
No. It wasn't. Oh. It was. It was a, It was not. It was not Rogers. Um, I'll let you figure that out. <laughs> I, I'll let you figure it out. I'll, I'll let be you. Cheating. I already know this one. I'll let you figure yeah. out which yeah. one she chose. But she did not pick Carl Rogers. Um, and person-centered therapy is not for everyone. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't match up with everybody's values. But um, she. She did not ultimately choose uh, Carl Rogers. But you have. The rest of this information about person-centered therapy, uh, we are going to uh, move now into a activity uh, that is based on person-centered techniques and we are going to divide into groups and practice.